Hi, welcome to the Dr. J. Bridge Show. My name is uh, Jim Sternberg, and uh, this is my co-host, uh, Vicki. So, Vicki, am I doing the show alone today, or do we have a guest? No, Jim. Today we have a well-known bridge teacher at Ballin Isles, Keith Hansen. Oh, great. So, let's get started. Let's spend a few minutes talking about uh, preempting and making life difficult for your opponents. Remember, bridge is similar to warfare. Eli Culbertson compared bridge to the maneuvering of an army and said that the side that makes the fewest blunders will be victorious. Well, if in Culbertson's era, bridge was like moving an army, today modern bid with the modern bidding arsenals, we can compare it more to like Star Wars. But despite all the advances in warfare and bridge, one strategy has stood the test of time, the preemptive strike which, if well-designed, is decisive on both battlefields. Remember, the purpose is not to find your best contract, but to prevent the opponents from finding theirs. Standards of bidding have improved dramatically over the years, and good pairs, if left alone, will usually reach good contracts. This is not good for your side. But even the best partnerships, when denied two, three, or four levels of bidding space, cannot bid accurately. Al Roth said that the purpose of bidding was to get to the best possible contract, but after a preempt, to get to the best contract possible. There's a big difference. When the hand belongs to the enemy, a preemptive opening puts them to the test. In today's world of sophisticated bidding, the importance of making life difficult for your opponents have never been greater. To be a consistent winner requires more than simply avoiding blunders. That may have been a good strategy in the Culbertson era, but now, instead of just sitting there waiting for a textbook hand to preempt, maybe you should loosen it up a bit and become a more difficult opponent. This is especially true when the vulnerability is in your favor. Ron Anderson, in his classic book on preempts, described these bids as calculated destructive sabotage. You have to take some chances if you want to make life difficult by trying to put maximum pressure on them as quickly as possible. Sure, occasionally you will go for a big number, but you will get good results 16 or 17 times out of 20, so what if you go for a number? You shouldn't worry about a few bad results. The damage you will have inflicted on your opponents will more than compensate for your occasional bad results. Plus, there is a fear factor. You become known as a more difficult opponent. So next month, we will talk more about this topic. But please, in the meantime, don't do any of this when you play against me. I have enough problems already. Hello, I am Keith Hansen. I'm the bridge instructor here at uh, Ballon Isles and in Palm Beach County. I am going to review an area of bridge bidding that many people are not too familiar with and perhaps could use a review on. So we'll start with hand number one. Uh, the bidding has gone one diamond on your left. Your partner has doubled north. The next player passes and now it's your turn to bid. You must bid in these situations. Your partner has made a takeout double. And you have three points, and uh, it's obligatory to bid. Otherwise, the final contract might become one diamond double. So even though you have four very small hearts, the correct bid is one heart. When you respond minimally to a takeout double, which you're doing, one heart, your partner should expect you to have zero to approximately nine points and four or more hearts. Uh, the big thing is you would bid one heart even if you had zero points and you happen to have three, but one heart is correct. Your partner should not expect you to have any values necessarily. Hand number two, you have seven high card points, one diamond on your left, double by your partner, pass. Well, you should bid, of course, and the correct bid, even though you have no high cards in hearts, is one heart. Again, a minimum response to a takeout double is zero to about eight or nine points. You should not bid one spade just because you have the ace and the king. You should bid one heart because 
you're supposed to show your length. Hand number three, the same scenario, one diamond on your left, doubled by your partner, pass. Well, this is a horrible, horrible situation. You have only two points, and you have no four or five card suit to bid. Your long suit is diamonds, which is what the opener bid. The first thing is you should not bid one no trump. Uh, you should never bid one no trump in response to a double with a bust or broken hand. You simply have to, you should not pass because if you pass, the takeout double becomes a penalty double. You should bid a three card suit here even though it's really disgusting and the right bid is one heart. Now normally you would have four but here you have an awful problem and you just have to bid one heart with three pieces. And that would show zero to eight or nine points. Okay, again the bidding has gone one diamond, doubled by your partner, pass. You're the responder to the takeout double, and again, you must bid. Well, here, your, your partner's double is asking you to bid your long suit. And your long suit is clubs, which is a minor suit, which aren't very important. So the choice here is between one no trump or two clubs. Now, two clubs would not be terrible, but one no trump is better because you have a diamond stopper and you have six to nine points. A one no trump response to a takeout double shows about six to nine points. It shows a stopper in their suit, which is diamonds, and uh, it shows six to nine points. You should not bid one no trump in response to a double if you're broke or near broke. Hand number five, the bidding has gone the same. One diamond on your left, double, pass. Well, your long suit is clubs. You have six high card points and five clubs, but you have a four card major, and even though clubs is your long suit, it's better to bid one spade. One diamond, double, pass, one spade. Your partner should think you have zero to possibly eight or nine points and four or five pieces of spades. It's more important to bid the spades than to bid the minor suit. And again, you could be broke, but you could have six, eight, nine points. Hand number six, you have eight high card points. And here you have a choice between bidding one no trump because you do have a diamond stopper or one spade with your eight points. Here it's better to bid the major. Your partner wants you to bid a major suit and spades are a major suit. So it's preferable to bid one spade. One diamond, double, pass, one spade says you have four or five spades and zero to nine points. One spade is preferable to one no trump. Okay, hand number one, the bidding has gone one heart on your left, double by partner, pass. Well, again, you must bid because your partner's takeout double is a forcing bid. Your only four card suit is hearts, you have a terrible hand, but you should not pass because a takeout double is a forcing bid. The correct bid here is one spade, even though you only have three pieces. Hopefully you won't have that too often in your life, but that's what it is, and you should not pass. You just have to bid a three card suit. Hand number two, the bidding has gone one heart, double, pass. You have seven points, your partner's double asks you to bid your longest suit again. You have two choices here that have some merit. Probably the best bid is two clubs because you have four clubs and zero to nine points. A one no trump response would not be ridiculous because you do have seven points and somewhat of possibly a heart stopper. Bidding one no trump here should identify that you have a heart stopper uh, you can kind of pretend like it's one. So one no trump or two clubs would be okay here. On hand number three, it's gone one heart, double, pass. Well, this is relatively easy, although uncomfortable. You should bid two diamonds, your four card suit. You should be happy you have a four card suit to bid. Your partner, this is not a two over one bid. It's responding to a takeout double in minimum fashion and partner should play you for zero to nine points, and diamonds is your best suit. Hand number four, one heart on your left, double by partner, 
pass. While you could bid two clubs, you could bid two diamonds, you have four cards in each of those suits, either one of those bids would be somewhat reasonable. Probably two clubs rather than two diamonds, your clubs are a little better. But probably the best bid is one no trump. The advantage of bidding one no trump is a one no trump response to a takeout double shows six or nine points, six to nine points. If you bid two clubs or two diamonds, you could be broke. Neither of those bids would be terrible, but probably one no trump is preferable. Hand number five, one heart, double, pass. Well, again, you must answer. Clubs is your long suit, but you have four spades, and spades is a major suit, so the correct bid is one spade. It's much better to bid your major than to bid the minor. Hand number six, one heart, Double pass. Well, you have an easy bid here. You have four spades. You have a few points, but even if you had no points, and it's correct to bid one spade. Again, the most important thing that we've discussed today in the area of responding to a takeout double, if you respond minimally, it shows zero to eight or nine points. That's debatable depending on which book you read. If you have more than nine points, you should do something else, not just bid minimally. A one no trump response is constructive. It means you have a few points, like six to nine, and generally you should have a stopper in the suit they have open and the suit that your partner doubled. Uh, in my long experience in bridge, there's a lot of fairly experienced players that aren't real comfortable with how to respond to a takeout double. I hope you enjoyed today's session. Thank you. We'd like to thank uh, Keith Hansen for appearing on the show, and I hope you've enjoyed his uh, bridge tips and that they'll help you with your game. Uh, Keith will be appearing again later in the season, and we'll be looking forward to hearing from him again. And uh, be sure to tune in again next month for some more uh, exciting bridge tips to help you with your game. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>